What a beautiful day it is here on this Thursday. Man, it's 46 degrees, that's about plus eight Celsius. Guys, if you're not out enjoying this weather today, you should be. We've got a pretty good episode of heads being rebuilt and cleaned up and all this good stuff. So stay tuned. So we are going to go inside and we are going to do some gasket matching on these new heads. And once we get that done, we're going to be jumping back to the garage at home. And there, we're going to start tearing apart the top end of my motor. So let's get at her. Okay guys, we are out here at the shop and we are just getting ready to do some gasket matching on these set of heads that I bought. And I wanted to show you what I meant by gasket match. So what we do is we take the intake gaskets and we match them up to the intake runners. And once we get the holes lined up here like so, we take a Sharpie and anywhere that the metal is still exposed within the hole of the gasket, we're just gonna draw a line. And when we take the gasket off, you'll see where those lines are. Then what we do is we take our die grinder and we are going to trim down to the edge of the, the line not taking off a lot of metal, just kind of rolling it back so that it flows into the hole of the gasket. So as you can see, I've already done the other one. It's all shined up there. So let's do the second one. That just about does it for those two. Nice and smooth all the way around. Let's get the other two done. So let's try those gaskets one more time here. I think it certainly looks a lot better than it did. I think we're gonna call that one good. And I think that one's pretty good too. So now you can see the difference between where it was before and now where it's at. It comes right out to the leading edge of the gasket. And basically, like I said, all we did was we just kind of took off that little bit of an edge all the way around and clean up any rough surfaces. So now as far as I'm concerned, these are stripped down. They are ready to be taken to the engine shop at uh, St. John Engine Rebuilders and uh, we're gonna have them set up first of the week, hopefully, anyways. And then that way uh, they'll have them for about a week with the new valve seats and new valves and everything put together. But uh, I've gotta make sure that my parts that I ordered from Summit are in, which I got the delivery notice this afternoon. So I've gotta go over to Cal's, pick those up, and then I can send everything away and have that done. So stay tuned for more updates on the heads, the J heads rebuild for the old Mopar. We're probably gonna tear some things apart in the car in this episode as well. So let's jump right into that. Okay guys, we have made it out to the shop, my shop at home. And today we're gonna to tackle getting those heads off the engine. So first things first, we have got to drain the antifreeze out of the radiator in hopes that the uh, antifreeze will drain through the motor as well so that when we pull those heads off, it's not gonna be a big sloppy mess on the floor. But before we can do that, I've gotta find myself a drain catch can or, a, or a, uh, something to catch all the antifreeze in because I don't really have anything. But I do see an empty tote over there. We're gonna uh, cut it down and make that work. So let's do that. My soul, that was not meant to be that difficult. 
So we've got that drain pan made uh, and we are about ready to turn the drain cock off the radiator, let the antifreeze pour out of that. Let's do it. And while that's draining out, we are going to disconnect the battery and uh, get started taking some of these things off. Okay, so we are down to just getting this last heater hose off here before we can start taking bolts out of the intake and pulling the intake off. But the only way to get through is with maybe a small quarter inch ratchet and socket down in there to get that because my nut driver's too long to get into here and here. I can't get a flathead in there. So we're gonna have to pull that off and once we get that done, then we can start yanking things apart We'll get the manifolds off, and then it should just be clear sailing from there. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and get that hose off, and then we're gonna go back to the uh, exhaust manifolds, and then we'll take the intake manifold off, and then the heads will be free and clear to knock off there with no problems at all. Cross your fingers. So we got the heater hoses out of the way, and uh, the next step is to tackle these exhaust manifolds, so that's what we're gonna do. So now that the exhaust manifolds are disconnected, we can now move on to the intake manifold. So the battery just died on my big light here, so I have to plug that one in, and for some reason, my air gun has no power. So we're stuck doing this, the rest of this, by hand. Now we've got a couple of these bolts that go down through that are going to be tough to get at with just a regular ratchet because they're in a tight spot. So we might end up having to use a uh, ratchet wrench. In here. Yeah. In here. Yeah. So as you can tell by the uh, Edelbrock performer intake that I've got here. I painted it blue to match the thrust of the engine because I wanted a stock look and although this is for the most part a stock replacement intake, um, you know when you look in I just wanted people to think that it was stock. I'm not sure how much extra performance it gives. I'd like to have a performer RPM or RPM air gap for this new setup that we're doing but if I can't find one in time, we may end up just resorting back to this one. And some of you guys may be asking, well, how come you're not using air? Well, on a couple of these bolts, you can't get an extension and a socket down in there, for starters. But for this whole setup, I've been pretty much using just elbow grease and Armstrong power. To uh, get these uh, all these bolts out, and exhaust, and all that stuff, just because I like wrenching. I don't do it a lot. I don't do it for a living, and uh, therefore I don't mind just doing it the old school. So, what do you guys think about the stock look on a car like this? Do you like everything being blue the way it is, or? Do you think I should dress it up some with some chrome valve covers and whatnot when I get the new heads on there? Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Should I dress it up or should I keep it a stock sleeper? All the intake bolts are out. 
Now we just got to get the valve covers off so that they're not coming up by this little lip here and then we can knock her loose. So I say we do that to a little bit of music. Okay, so we're at the point now where the intake is ready to come off. So what I want to be able to do is just take a flat screwdriver down into this little hole here, give it a little pry on both sides. With any luck at all, it should just pop out of there. So there's going to be a little bit of antifreeze come out of this and make a really, really good mess. So. I don't think there's any real easy way to do this, but we'll lift it off. Well, there you have it, folks. We've got the intake off, and uh, everything is looking good so far down inside here. So all we've got to do now is get the heads off, and one of the things that I realized or thought that I was going to be able to do without was taking all the accessories off, like the AC compressor, the alternator. But on this head here, there are two bolts that hold these brackets into place. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to get these off without taking the alternator off. And uh, so what we're gonna do next is get the alternator off, get those two bolts out, and then we can start tearing apart our valve train. And having said that, that will conclude part one of the engine teardown and we will continue with that again in the next episode. So stay tuned right here to this channel so that you guys can make sure you follow along and see how the heads come off of this small block LA360. The plan here is, is to get the heads off so that we can check the deck clearance between the piston and the top of the deck um, because that's going to have a little bit to do with what we're gonna have done to the heads. So if we're looking for a little bit more compression, we may have to play the heads planed a little bit, but we don't know until we get these heads off and uh, get things done here. So this will conclude this episode. So guys, in the description box below, there are four links, and I hope that you will be able to go over and take a look at them. The first being a link to my merch. If you guys want to support my channel in just one more fashion, get your own fashion. Old Car Auto Guy t-shirts and hoodies a sale for sale at bonfire.com. The second link is for Straight Six Fan. He is my co-host for the Thursday evening live stream. This week, it will be hosted on my channel. So please, if you haven't done so already, I would encourage you to go right down here and click on that red subscribe button and the bell notification so that you get notified every time I upload a new video and when the live stream is about to begin. The other two links are for my Patreon and for TubeBuddy, if you are a YouTube creator, you can use TubeBuddy to help enhance your channel with things like thumbnails, tags, descriptions, and titles. I use it every day, and it is my affiliate link if you go down there and you can use that. There's a free version as well as a paid version that offers you a few more things. Guys, as I always say in every video, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you guys, God bless. And this week, Kyle from Rust Belt Mechanic will be joining me on my live stream for an extended 45 minute show. Guys, we'll see you in the next upload.